It is Monday night once again, and here we are live in the Madhouse with the Maverick Soul Out with Tommy Moore. I have a very special guest tonight, and we uh, we had a lot of uh, fun stuff fun. we did this week. We fun. did, but let me, like I always do, let me go into my week. Uh, I have a couple announcements to make here. So, um, uh, number one, I would like to uh, just let everybody know again that uh, on March 9th, we will be covering uh, the Amber Ferrari uh, CD release party at 89 North in Patchogue. And uh, if you don't have a ticket for that show, you are out of your mind because it's going to be unbelievable. Uh, Richie Cannata will be there from Billy Joel. Um, there's a surprise guitarist going to be there now, from what I'm being told. And, of course, Amber is going to be there. And, I mean, God, we all know she is just amazing. And the band is amazing. So that will be the place to be on March 9th on Long Island. So all And wear your blue stuff, too, because it's for the electric blue. And um, I'm really looking forward to that. We'll, we will be doing the show. The Maverick Soul Hour will be doing the show. We'll be doing interviews with the band before, after. And uh, we'll show you a little during uh, the show also. So uh, I, I'm l really looking forward to it. And uh, I hope, Amber, I hope you are too. I'm, I, she's very excited about this because it's a big deal, man. It's a big deal. And, uh, and we'll get you in the studio. We will have Chris and Amber in when we run the show, uh, which we don't know what date yet. We'll, I'm going to meet with Amber uh, this week and we'll come up with a date. Uh, to run the show, but they'll be in and we'll critique the show together right here live in the studio. So that's my first thing. Um, I also would like to uh, thank uh, the Matt and Amy band. Uh, we were invited out to see them on uh, Saturday night. We went out and uh, the band was very good and uh, they asked me to come up and do a song. I did one song. It was fun and it was a good crowd and uh, it was a good night. Good one of the best I've ever heard the band play. They were very good. I take my hat off to you guys for that. Uh, also, some announcements that we have. Um, we have a, a partnership now. I am going to become a partner at Madhouse, and uh, we are going to be moving into a big, much bigger studio. We're going to triple the size of this studio. We're going to have a full sound stage in there. We can bring the big bands in. We don't have to worry about the drums and the noise and that, and that's what I'm waiting for. And uh, we also are going to have radio. And, um, and as a third entity, we will have the reality television also. So we're going to cover all the bases here at Madhouse. And, uh, you know, you guys, uh, anybody interested in doing a radio show, contact Madhouse and um, maybe we can set you up. You can have your own radio show. It's not a tough thing to do. And, uh, and also, as far as advertising, if uh, any of you guys want to advertise on, on this show or any of the shows, let us know. It's very, very affordable. Uh, I personally think even if I was a, uh, you know, if I had a landscaping business, I would have commercial on here because it's, it's that feasible. So, um, you know, jump in there and uh, get your business going because um, we're, we're getting out to a lot of people now. It's, gotten, it's really growing leaps and bounds. So... Um, I'm looking forward to the radio because I am going to be doing a, uh, a radio show, a classic rock uh, radio show five days a week. And uh, actually, we did a, um, a trial. Tom called me like an hour before Saturday night and said, let's do a mock-up uh, radio show. You got any ideas? So I said, well, let's, uh, let's do a vanilla fudge hour. So uh, we only, I only put it up an hour before the actual show, so I know a lot of people didn't get to see it. But if you go on my Facebook page or Madhouse's, you could click on and actually listen to the show. It was an hour long. Uh, we had a little trouble in the beginning with the uh, sound, but uh, Tom straightened that out, and uh, we got it right. And uh, actually, Vince Martell called the show. Uh, he was in his car phone, so it was a little muffly, but I repeated everything that you know he missed because he had some dates coming up for some shows. And Vince, we would like to thank you very much for allowing us to, to, to run that show and uh, play some of my favorite songs uh, of my life, you know, with the Vanilla Fudge. And uh, we, we hope to get you guys in the studio, too, because they will be on tour. They'll be doing a lot of touring this summer. Um, and um, as you all know, my special guest here tonight and one of my best friends in the entire world, Mr. Neville Chesters, 
And for all of you people who don't know Neville, uh, Neville um, was the road manager for The Who, Cream, and... Mr. Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix. And also worked very closely with the Beatles. Uh, Zeppelin, you worked a lot with Zeppelin. Um, Bee Gees. The Bee Gees. ELP. Uh, Emerson, oh, Lincoln Palmer. Emerson, Lincoln Palmer. James Taylor, right? Yeah, yeah. James, James Taylor. Yeah. He's worked with all of the royalty in the world. And actually, uh, while he's still around, he's going to be uh, helping me out on my radio show, t show, too. Because, I mean, what better <clears throat> rock and roll encyclopedia could I possibly have sitting with me as, as this man right here? Because... Uh, he knows more about it than the actual artist because a half of them don't really remember. But Neville seen it all, all. So uh, that'll be a great time. I'm looking forward to mm. that. That'll be very cool. And you will be hearing the real classic rock. You won't be hearing this. Uh, you'll be hearing the real deal. That's all I'm going to say. And that will be later. Later, Not, not much later. We'll be uh, moving very quickly with the radio show. And um, I'm really, truly looking forward to that. Um, we're going to take a quick commercial, and when we come back, we're going to talk about what we did Thursday. So we'll be right back with the Maverick Soul with Tommy Marr and my special guest, Mr. Neville Chesters. Hang in there, get yourself tight. We'll be right back, right after this, right after these wonderful words. Later. <laughs> Brooklyn's best locksmith and hardware. We have three of the largest showrooms of safes on display and in stock. You can see and touch them in person instead of browsing a catalog. We carry gun and rifle safes, burglary safes, jewelry safes, fire rated from a half hour to two hours, famous name brands. We sell guard all. We sell AMSAC. The new AMSAC touchscreen. If you're ever in need of a safe, think Brooklyn's best locksmith and hardware. Right, Lockie? That's right, Alan. For professional motorcycle transport and towing, think Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Proudly serving all of Long Island, we feature expert handling and 24-7 service. So send a limo for your toy with Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Welcome to Formula Auto Wash, where every day is a great day for a car wash. Open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Sundays, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Detailing packages for every budget, starting out at $29.99. 100% hand wash and detail centre. Hogs hair and microfiber brushes and mitts. Proudly using Ecolab Blue Coral soaps and waxes. Formula Auto Wash has served the community for over 30 years. Senior discounts all day, every day. Ladies' Day Wednesday, $3 off any wash. Early bird discount Monday through Thursday till 9.30 a.m. Check out our website, formulaautowash.com. We are back live with the Maverick Soul and my special, special man over here, Mr. Neville Chesters. Um, how I want, exp I want to explain this show, number one. I want the show to be um, what the average person like myself never gets to see. And Neville used to be the road manager for The Who. Okay, so obviously he has connections. So Neville hooked us up. They played the Coliseum on Thursday night, and Neville hooked us up with going over. I, I have my VIP pass, backstage pass, right here. I brought it, just so you know. And um, so I want to explain the day, but I, the basis of this show is to really just bring the average person to see and feel what we never get to see and feel. Now, Neville... He's been with Hendrix and Cream and The Who and Zeppelin and The Beatles and everyone. So 
He has seen it all. So this was... Well, not quite all. Well, I mean, but backstage-wise, he's, he's seen it all. I've seen it on a much smaller scale. You know, the, the, the bigger clubs on the island. I've, I'm, in, I'm in a few bands myself, so I, I, I know basically, but never <laughs> on, 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 on the size of what we saw Thursday. So I want to run through our day, and I want to take you guys along on the trip just like I saw it and felt it because, let's face it, you, you're never going to see things like this. And uh, I'm going to start by saying we got there at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, okay? Um, we were fortunate enough to be one of three cars that were allowed to park underneath uh, the Coliseum, mm -hmm. and the other two were Mr. Roger Daltrey and, and Mr. Mr. Pete Townsend. Townsend. So that was very cool by itself. Yeah. Um, but then uh, we walked in, we, went, we came through up the loading dock, and as we walked down the corridor, we, um, I, I just was blown away mm. by the boxes and boxes flight and cases. boxes, yeah. flight cases of equipment that were just, it must have been, I, I actually, I think we have half a picture. The way, half the way around Is the Coliseum. Is there any way we can um, put that picture up of the... Uh, the flight cases. The flight cases, is that possible in the hallway? We are trying. I All right, well, in the meantime, anyway, so we got there at 3 <laughs> o'clock, and we, and we went and we sat, and uh, we were sitting in the back, back, back of the stage area, and um, who comes by but Rob, Roger Daltrey, um, which I know Janine was stunned. and uh, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you got to remember, these guys go back, from what year? It's I mean, nearly 50 years. Almost 50 years. So, I mean, they're, but they haven't seen each other in quite a while, right? I haven't seen them since uh, 72. Right. Briefly. So, so it was a great, um, you know, bond that they had. They, they went through the, he went through the real years with them. And uh, so it was really nice to see the, the uh, camaraderie between the two of them. And um, so, Roger had to go to his dressing room, and he said he talked with Neville for a while, and we talked for a bit, and then um, we were sitting and sitting and sitting, and then here comes Pete. He comes walking by, and uh, but he had his head down and just kept on going. <laughs> so I was like, "That that was Pete." That just, he goes, "Yeah, he'll, he'll be back," and uh, within a few what fifteen minutes or so, he came back to say hello. Well, and um, Nicola, and, Pete's assistant, peeled off and came over. And, and said, uh, oh, you beat us here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. which was good as yeah. well. Um, and and, and she to, we, we definitely want to thank her because she treated us like yeah. we were like... Yeah, Nicola you know, is, is, is really... Nicola, uh, we yeah. thank you, I mean, from the bottom of my heart, <clears throat> and I'm sure Janine's, yeah. and I'm sure Neville's. Uh, yeah. yeah, You treated us above and beyond how anybody should be treated. Yeah, yeah. Um, she took care of us. She the just whole included time. us, didn't it? She, she just, included yeah. us in everything. Yeah. There wasn't anything that we weren't a part of. Mm. Um, I think that I'm, I'm just running through this brief scenario, and then we're going to let Neville take his parts and pieces of it. But um, then uh, Pete came back, and uh, we we met, and um, we took actually I think took a picture or two with Pete. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, he was still in his street clothes, and uh, and. Um, he invited us to have dinner with that with the band and everything. So, mm. uh, but he said he had to go do the sound check. So we were still sitting there, and then um, Nicholas said, they, they came "Why in. don't you go out and yeah, watch, Nicholas, the sound, watch the sound said, check?" You guys, would you like to go out and see the sound check and sit anywhere you want? So, um, <laughs> being me, I was like, "Well, we walked out into an empty coliseum, empty." But not well, quite. well, it was it was like. 50, 50, people 50 people completely right in the, the back, back. Beyond the sound desk. All the way in the back. Mm. I, and I, there was some kind of um, to whether pack, they were uh, contest deal. winners or whatever it was. Yeah. But they were way, 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 way in the back. And we, I said, well, if I'm going in, and she said we could sit anywhere, I'm going right <laughs> in the front. So we sat right <laughs> this far from Roger Daltrey was right here. And we <laughs> sat right here in front of them. And it was great because we got to interact with them. We got to talk with them. You know, we watched the whole, uh, Neville critiqued the, all, all the work that was being done on the stage. That's not right. That's not right. They should bring that up. That's over. You know, and we watched them set all the levels and that. And, but it was, it was, it was interesting. Uh, I mean, 
Mm. I think the most interesting part about it was when you turned around and you had the whole Nassau Coliseum completely yeah, empty. Yeah, it's pretty, it was really, it's really mind-boggling. Like, unreal, you know? And here's Roger Daltrey standing 18 inches from you, and Pete Townsend's five feet over here. And the band, I mean, how many people are in that band? Well, they got two, two horns. Two keyboards. For, they had... For, for, I've forgotten the bass, the, the, the famous as well, the bass player. Simon, Pete's brother. Which I got to say, one of the nicest gentlemen yeah. you'll yeah. ever meet. Yeah, it was... Simon Townsend. Yeah. What a... what he, he, We had a ball with him. We had a ball with him. And the keyboard player. And I'm really sorry, I forgot his name offhand. But we actually had dinner with them. And, well, he's uh, the musical director. Yeah, he 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 was yeah, he was he, calling all the shots. But what a what a, he he played with um, Stevie Nicks, and when he comes off the tour with the Who, he's I believe he's going with the uh, Heart. Yeah. So, but what a what a great guy. He's from California. We had a great time. We had dinner with them, and and um, Zach Starkey, which is Ringo Starr's son, who plays drums for the Who, a great guy, really really nice guy. And um, I mean, it was it was it was for me it was surreal, but it was cool. You know what I mean? Like uh, I wasn't overwhelmed by it. I was just well, it was just intrigued yeah, by yeah, it. You know, like oh, so this is this is, this is how it This works. is how they live. This is how it goes. And then uh, so we actually sat right there for a good what hour for the sound check. Pretty close it, to it. It seemed like it was quite a while. It was yeah. a long. Yeah, it was a yeah, long one. Yeah, but um, debating various it was, things. It was. It was. That to me was like really, really amazing. It's funny how they run; they want to run through a tune, and then suddenly Pete goes, "Does it go like that?" Yeah. And it's, yeah. and well, and he had a he had a he had a. Uh, I think the, the the guy's name is Mike. I think the the yeah. The, the, what a nice guy, right? Yeah. Was yeah. great guy. I yeah. mean, he took care of us. Very, too. very, very friendly. He, he, t- yeah. he took yeah. care of us. Um, and because and they debated, so they tried a couple of things, and and Pete's like, well, we, "We've done this." We've we've done this thirty times. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. Do we really? Yeah, it, need to? It, was it was a little try, weird like that. Funny, I mean, and as a musician, I was sitting there like. Because I was saying, I said, Tommy. Oh, normally, right. the bands don't even do a sound check because right. of the techs. They right. each have their own guy, right. and the techs nowadays can play guitars. You know, right. they are guitarists. Well, that didn't make it. It know? was a sold out show. There was not an empty yeah. seat in the place. So, and I that's guess. another thing when you're sitting in Coliseum and then you turn round. Yeah, and it's like unbelievable. The floor and up, yeah, it's. I mean, and I, I would imagine that they wanted everything just right because yeah. that, that's a big. That's yeah. New York is New York, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, and they did. They it did was good. it was surreal. It was actually surreal. So then after that, um, you know, we went back and um, they invited us to have dinner with them, and we went and uh, had dinner with a couple of the guys from the band, Starkey. Um, Ringo's son and uh, the, the keyboard player and uh, well Pete and them were there and then after we had dinner, which well, was, was Bill, I mean Bill Kirbishley, their, their manager. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't talk to him till later on. Right. Because right. well, everybody was in the room. Yeah. I mean, everybody was in the room. Me, uh, which and I, which was amazing because I said, I we actually. I want to say hello, and he said, "Well, I didn't want to interrupt you because you." Would. <laughs> but but the funny part was. Even the keyboard player, right? When we walked out, we saw the, the yeah. food over there, yeah. and they went, no, you're in that room. And you walk in this room, it was like being in, in, in the world of Astoria with the yeah. chefs and the hats and the slice and the leg of lamb and uh, all this. I mean, it, I mean... And I, you're, you, you come to the end of the I, line, and you're like expecting there's a cash register. <laughs> you said well, to me, no, I didn't expect that, but I, I, I was a little... You, you look, I, you're looking at me. It wasn't like a, a lunchroom. Let me, let me put it that way. No, it was like it being in a, was, in a top... Five star hotel. It, it was, was it was china plates and yeah, proper right, right, right. flatware, whatever right. you call it. So it it was, it was definitely a lot of fun. And, yeah. uh, then after that, um, we went backstage again, and uh, then uh, Pete's assistant Nicola Nicola came and said uh, Pete would like you to join him in in, in his dressing room, and um, so we went down there and we hung out with Pete in. Uh, for what an hour, hour and a half, something like that. Again, it's, at it least, was, yeah, it's, at least because there was an opening act too. So, yeah, the uh, vintage trouble, right? Opened. Which was a very, they were very good. I mean, yeah, this, they were. Very it's funny because when when we were going to the the restaurant, we we was over the other side of the stage and we didn't want to walk all the way around. Right. So I said, well, we we'll just there's a, there's a, a passageway where right. security stand with a fence. And we just walked across, and, and I looked up at the singer, and, and he, he recognized me from Barber right, Center, right, and he right. went, 
Oh, well, he liked your jacket. Well, he said, he said something about, I was going to wear a white jacket right. tonight. I'm yeah. glad I didn't. Cream, he said cream. Oh, okay. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they look sharp. They look, I like the way they were dressed. They were well, they're supposed to. Shark skin suits. Yeah, and that. Yeah, I like uh, that. Yeah. It was cool. Um, and then. Um, we didn't really watch them, you know. It, no, but we, I could hear, I yeah. mean, we heard them. Yeah. We heard their sound check, and they were, they were yeah, hot. They were the, yeah, they yeah. were, yeah. They were hot. Yeah. But um, uh, the, uh, the part that I really was like, a little, a little weird about was uh, being in the dressing room, and you know you're in there, and here's this icon, hanging with you, talking to you. Well, I mean he was talking to Neville a lot, <laughs> because they go way, way, way back. But I mean I must say he did extend himself to, yes, to he was, myself and Janine, yeah. and it was uh, he was such a, a gentleman, and mm -hmm. I mean I mean he signed. Well, he, there's a little story to this too. Uh, Pete just came out with this new book, and um, Oh, last we surprised Neville and uh, got him a copy a while back because we had heard that Pete wrote a, a, a page a, a, about Neville in there. So we got him the, the book mm. and... Um, yeah, they laid it on me. <laughs> yeah, we, we laid it on him. And uh, it actually was a great thing because it got yeah, you was... back together with him because yeah. he read the book, he read the piece, and he went and uh, hooked up with them at the Barclay Center in Brooklyn. Yeah. And... Um, and now this, that's how this whole thing came about, which was, I, don't, it's, uh, I can't uh, thank uh, you uh, enough for including us. I mean, I mean. I'm glad, I, I, it, it was great. It was it, great you being there. I mean. It know. was, it was surreal. It was surreal. But not, it was, to, not to mention that you actually ran me there. You carried me. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. You. Hey, and we're you're, brothers. And you're very, very cool. You and Janine are very cool. So it was perfect you know it was great it was great um, i i uh you have to be careful back there and uh, and pete was very you know like you know yeah. we took pictures which we'll show you some pictures mm. um signed the book he made yeah. sure we ate uh you know it was really 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 yeah. just a class mm. day act the whole thing was mm. was was phenomenal i mean yeah. uh i would like to see can we can we possibly put up a couple pictures Oh, what you want to put it out there? Just describe them as you see them. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Now, well, can you go back? Can you go back? Ding, ding, ding. No. The, the one before that. Yeah, okay. This is when we first got there. And uh, <laughs> why do we keep losing that? Uh, I want to go on that one where I was. Actually, there you go. That's when we first walked in. And um, this whole hallway, if well, you'll see another picture. As far as the eye could see. As far as you could see, these boxes and boxes and boxes of equipment. All right. Which is probably a So that's me thing. saying, who? Who? <laughs> but, um, all right, can we go to another one? That uh, logo they've got is a second. I like that logo. But it's the second iteration. All right, now here, here, here's a special picture. Ah. If you see the gentleman, well, you know that's, that's myself and Neville on the left. But the gentleman in the middle, which his name is? Bobby Pritton. That is the man who took Neville's place with the Who. And he is still with the Who. In 1967. All these years. But that was Neville's job, which he now has. And uh, that's the two of them right there. He so. looks very cheerful and actually really quite healthy. And I look like death. And, oh, stop. And miserable stop. again. I'm Come on, <laughs> you look younger than he does. No. But he was also a very, very, he, he treated us very well. Yeah, yeah. And, well, uh, Bobby's a good guy. He's, he's, he has no... The, yeah, the, the, it, well, the, I mean, yeah, it's been... Yeah. All right, now we have, uh, that was uh, the backdrop on the stage. Well, yeah, just one of the screens. Yeah. They have this whole... That, that screen had to be, oh my God, it had to be 40 feet by... Uh, well, it's 40 feet in diameter. This, right. That's one of the circular ones. Right. They have a, they it's have an a oval huge... Like, yeah. Uh, thing behind them, and then they There's have three of them. the big s screens, which are live right. of the band on the sides, and then right. they have these ovals, and then all the lighting. Into right. It. It's pretty. It's a fancy setup, right? Yeah. And I know they have at this least. This was before the show, actually. Okay, and there's there's Neville with Pete. Oh, that was that was when that's when uh, that was at the beginning. That's Pete still in his street clothes. He's like a foot taller than me, isn't he? He's tall. He's tall. He's. I'm six foot. He's taller than me. He's got to be six two. And I, I've, he's got to be six I've two. I've argued with him, and 
And there's a picture of Pete and I, which you could see. He is taller oh, yeah, than yeah. me. He's an inch bigger than you. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, treated us really, really, really well. I mean, I, I was shocked. There's Janine with Pete. He makes us look good. Janine doesn't. was on Cloud Nine when uh, Roger Daltrey walked in. She was. Well, we now, have, here, we here, here we have Neville, myself, and Pete Townsend's brother, Simon, which plays guitar with The Who. And I'll tell you, he's, he, I listened to, yesterday I listened to oh, some yeah. of his, uh, uh, his own stuff. Yeah. Very, very good. Yeah. But well, he's, uh, he's gone out with, with the, 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 um, the band, the, the, we used it before, the Canadian band, uh, Heart. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's doing the Heart. Well, show. I'll tell you, what I liked about watching him on stage was him and his brother, they looked like they really clicked mm. together and they were having fun together. Yeah. They were smiling back and forth and they were on two ends of the stage. And, uh, but what a gentleman, what a nice guy, mm. spent a lot of time with us. Now Simon is approximately, I think, fifteen years younger. Than yeah, he. Well, he he, he looks. Yeah. I think and so. there's uh, me and my man right there, Neville. The who? Oh, and Leslie. A word and out for Leslie. The Leslie. She's a she's a. All right, she's now a corker. He, I am. I we This oh, guy, Mike. Mike. I think he is the like. keyboard player. I'm. Well, he's a musical director. I actually, yeah, he's he's yes, yes he. This guy is amazing, but what a great, great guy. We ha mm. That's who we spent most of the day with, too, I must say. Yeah, we kept... He, we ate, we his, ate with him and everything. Was, he he, he yeah. was very, very cool, and uh, he'll be going out with Hart after the tour with uh, The Who. Yeah, he worked so. with Roger f on for a long time. I mean, this doing the Quadrophini thing is taking... Now, away. here's a very special picture. And all of you guys out there that know me know I believe in orbs and energy. <laughs> Check out the orb on my cranium <laughs> on that picture. But that's, uh, that's in Pete's dressing room, actually. Uh, right be probably 10 or 15 minutes before they went on stage. No, it's just after they came off. No. Oh, yeah, no. you're right. You're right. Sorry. We, no, they no, were gone. They, they, right. they, they, yeah. they did the run. Well, that was about 10 minutes. Now, here's a picture of Pete signing this book. What happened? That was a picture of you talking. <laughs> okay. There's a picture of Pete signing my book, and he also signed Janine's, and he signed Neville's. Actually, I think that was Neville's book that he was writing in there. So that's uh, quite a lot of writing. And that's in the dressing room. It was uh, quite surreal. I mean, as anyone would, would guess, it was pretty, uh, pretty, pr pretty bizarre. Yeah. Um, and actually, uh, they're playing at the Garden tonight, right? No, Thursday. Oh, I thought it was Monday. No, Thursday. Okay. And uh, tomorrow they are in Rhode Island. Okay. I believe. They're going to Rhode Island and back to New York? Yeah. Wow. Well, they were, uh, to the Tuesday before last Thursday, they were in Canada, in Ontario. No, I know, but I thought they were, I thought they were playing Monday in the go. I think, I think they have at least two complete sets, possibly three. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the flight cases that you saw are about a quarter of what they had at the Barclay Center, because th that's much bigger there backstage, yeah. and it was just a sea. Well, and that, I, that's uh, the thing, you know, I wanted to, uh, to really actually um, talk to you about, because uh, to me... Um, you, you were really perplexed about how many people were involved. Well, that's what I want to talk about. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to go to a commercial, yeah. and we're going to come back, and we're going to take you back there, and I want, I want you guys to get the whole vision from Neville's eyes because I watched him the whole time because I was just thinking, what is he thinking? Because I'm thinking, my God, this is just, how, how is it even arranged? I mean, it was just so many people. So we're going to take a quick commercial. We're going to come back with some more stories backstage with The Who. Be right back with the Maverick Soul. Hang in there and stay tight. Freshness, softness, and static control has never been easier with the Bounce Dryer Bar. I just stick it to the inside of my dryer, and I never have to remember. Oh, 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 o
Somebody's brain makes you smell like power! It's so powerful it sells itself in other people's commercials. You smell like outdoor freshness. You smell like power? Yeah, I do. Try this routine to feel fresh and clean. Pair Charmin Fresh Mates with your Charmin. Oh, Old Spice Body Spray is too powerful to stay in its own commercial. That's right. B -b 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 power. Uh, hmm. uh, Ray, I don't know. Are you sure clicking this thing will get us online? Well, try dragging it. Hmm. Faster. <laughs> You're just a mouse click away from a better way to rent movies. Blockbuster Total Access. Movies through the mail plus movies through the store. One low price. Here's the problem. We <laughs> forgot to plug it in. Oh, don't even think about it. Get a free trial at your Blockbuster store or Blockbuster.com. This is Beth. Hi. Oh, congratulations. When are you due? I'm not pregnant. Oh, look at that. Excuse me. You're totally thin. You look very sexy. For life's bleachable moments, all it takes is three quarters of a cup. We are back. Who are you? Who, 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 who? We're back with Mr. Neville Chesters. Like I said, was the road manager for The Who. Hendrix, Cream, goes on and on and on. Um, what I wanted to talk a little about is because um, Neville worked with them back in the older days where you actually had to hump this stuff up, up on your back. I mean, uh, he was the first man to ever uh, touch a 100-watt Marshall amp, right? Yeah, I went to the factory to pick up the first... Well, Pete. Uh, yeah, they only want. They only made fifties, and Pete wanted a hundred. And Pete right? wanted a hundred, and he harangued Jim Marshall until Jim agreed, and then they designed a hundred watt, which I've been told was stolen from somewhere, but we won't go into that. Yeah. And they were made. Um, we had six one hundred watt amplifiers. Uh, four. 8 by 12. So if you, if anybody knows of a Marshall cabinet, which is 4 by 12, our original ones were just one piece. So they, they were 8 by 12. They were taller than me, and they weighed about 140 pounds. Yeah. And well, I was by myself. That's why I say when we, we, we were sitting there, everything's mm. on wheels. I was, never wouldn't this have been a lot easier on you if it was like this back well, in the day? And plus, the, the thing that really blew me away and, and we've, we're still talking about it. Mm. It, it. It has to be so astronomical. I mean, mm. the who alone had to have yeah, at I least don't. 50 people. Yeah, probably. At yeah. least 50 people, never mm. mind mm. the Coliseum stage crew and everybody oh. else involved. And I'm thinking of the airfare, the hotels, the gas. The, I mean, There's like eight or ten tour buses. Yeah, the uh, whole parking lot was filled with and tour buses. I don't know how many trailers were there. On, <laughs> it's, I just can't imagine. Yeah, it is. It, is, it was. That's what was overwhelming to me. To me like, I mean, I'm like, wow, this is really mm -hmm. a giant j jigsaw puzzle. It has to run yeah. smooth. And there's, there's, there's got to be and some very easy pressure. Going, very easy going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Mean, pretty Nicholas. Pretty. I much think the in toughest charge. thing was the sound check. <laughs> That seemed that to be was, where the most was uh, quite, was quite funny, cursing was going on. Yeah, and, uh, well, yeah, but it was it was okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it was cool. But now, <clears throat> what did you think? What did, what was your feelings? Well, I, I, I mean, I, I mean, I got I got to just say, we were sitting there watching the show. We were sitting in the front row, and I must say, when he was Neville, really isn't one to sit and actually watch the concerts. He's yeah. usually backstage, and. Um, I must say, I told him this afterwards, though, but he was sitting to my right, and uh, I seen when he was staring at the band, and I could see he was lost. And I was just staring, like, sneaking a peek, saying, you know, what is he thinking, you know, what is he thinking, you know, and 
what, what was going through your mind? You know, I mean, you don't want to know, but I was. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I was scratch the question. I didn't want to know. That. I was just, I was looking at the at the set. Yeah, I, I, I figured you were like, footage. that's wrong. That's that should be over I, there. I, two or three times, I said to you, "Oh, uh, that's done. That was shot at the marquee." Right. Because right. they they have footage go, going back of themselves going back to. Well, I was with them 65, 66, and there is footage from the marquee in London in 65 and 66. I know because it's a green and white striped roof. Right. And I was there. Right. I mean... Well, actually, you were actually in some of the footage that they showed. The, yeah, there is. But Couple it's, quickies. it's fleeting. I'm not, I mean, nobody's supposed to right. be. It's, right. it's May. I mean, well, I, I, I want to ask you something because I'll tell you what I thought was a very touching part of the show and probably the most touching part of the show is that they actually included uh, Keith Moon oh, those, and John Antwistle yeah, those are brilliant. into the show, yeah. actually playing. It's like a 15-minute spot. And, and Roger Daltrey, you could actually see, he just turned around, and you could see he was missing his friends. You know? Well, when Keith's playing, um, he's got headphones on, which before we had good monitors, right. we used headphones. Right. I mean, uh, even with ELP, uh, right. we had to do that with Carl. But you see that Roger hands him the microphone and he does that bellboy stuff. Right. And Roger actually on stage with Keith on the screen puts the microphone up and it just looks like Keith's taking it from him. It's, I, it's, I, it's brilliant. It, yeah. it was, it, it was, I mean. I didn't want to say anything to they you had, because had, I didn't you know, want to spoil and it. Then, and then Keith Moon's, you know, yeah. he had ear, earphones on and they kept falling off and he's like grabbing them and trying to play and, and he's singing and he's standing over the drum singing. But. The, the sound that they had, it sounded yeah. like he was even louder than the actual band on the stage. Well, he, and, he was. and John Antwistle also. Yeah. They were showing John playing those, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, that was. The standing ovations for two guys that weren't And the even, roar that went up. Oh my yeah. Lord. Yeah. I thought that was the coolest part about the whole, yeah. to me, to me, because it was, it was, you know. I think I said that to you after the Barclay Center thing about how they honored yeah, Both I thought I thought I think that was and I and I yeah. thought it was a real class act too. Yes. I really do. Yeah. Uh, I I believe we have a phone call. Who do we got? You got the Maverick Soul. Hello. Hello. Thomas. Yes. How are you, buddy? Who do we got? This is Matt Levine calling. Oh well, I'm a little far away from the board, so hey, how you doing, buddy? Okay. What's going on? Nothing. Listen, I want to thank you for coming down to the show and uh, and singing House of the Rising Sun with us. You did a great job. Thank you. You are always. You are, it's always a pleasure playing for you. And I wanted to ask Neville a question. Go. Oh, that's yeah. that's Other what he's here. Job, Neville, I want to say hello. My name is Matt. Hello, Matt. Friend of Tommy's. Play guitar. Blah blah blah. Yeah. All beside the obvious of, of all the all the bands that you were a road manager for and all the stories you told mm. and all the experience you had. Did you take a piece of everything from every band that you worked with? Sadly, and no. And use it to better your life? Because you seem to be one of the most grounded people in the position that you're in, where most people would just, you know, stand on the soapboxes at the top of the roofs and say, this is what I've done. You seem to be the mo most grounded and level-headed. Did each experience with each band that you did, did you take a little bit of each band and, and develop your own kind of way of being? Well, physically, no. In fact... Most of the people who I know that worked for the bands I did afterwards did take, especially Jimmy. I mean, sadly, uh, when Jimmy passed, a lot of equipment disappeared and then reappeared years later on major auction sites. But I didn't. Uh, I had a bunch of... No, I wasn't talking about physical stuff. I was talking about more... The vibe. ...spiritual stuff. Because I feel... Yeah. When I listened to Jimmy play on the albums and when I was, like, coming up and, and yeah. when I was a kid playing, I felt things, you know, yes. from different guitar players. Yeah. Did you take any of, of the emotional experiences with you as you grew and went oh. through the ranks and, and became the, the amazing person that you are now? Not, okay. I don't mean if you took a guitar pick or a freaking cable. I'm talking about if, if, you know, what you gained spiritually through the whole thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, spirituality was not a word used much in the 60s except with Baba. Well, I, I, but I, yes, I, I, yes, I would I have did. to say that yeah, I think working so. with The Who, Cream, Hendrix, 
the Beatles, and James Taylor, and on and on and on and on. I mean, I think that's, you yeah. know, I mean, he's not I, a guy. I, 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 I know Neville very well. I've been out with him many, 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 many nights. And he's not one to say, I'm Neville Chester's or anybody. Yeah. You know, he just he just digs the whole scene, and uh, he That's is great. what he is. I mean, and um, I, I, I love listening to you talk, Neville. I can listen to you for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> I'll bring him over, Matt. <laughs> and sure, yeah. If you want to come down to my little guitar hut, he's more than welcome. <laughs> I, just wanted to, I just wanted to ask you that question because you're yeah. just so level-headed. And you right. and, and you just you speak it you speak of it so matter of factly when you're actually a big a big part to me from listening to you both shows and from listening to Tommy ra rant and rave about you <laughs> I, I you know I it's incredible how grounded and how level headed you stayed I'm I'm really I'm, I'm actually quite humble I'm, I'm I'm humble with Tommy and you Matt you know but. It was it really it's, it's, it's yeah. a pleasure just being able to, to speak to you. Now, now I Thank feel you. like I, you know, like I touched Robert Plant's a lock of hair or something. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm all trembly and excited. I'll, I'll cut you some. I'll cut you some of Neville's hair off. You could have had some. Oh, uh, you you a haircut, Neville. You can't do that. You gotta, well, you I'll bring him to. I'll bring him to one of your Matt. I'll bring him to one of your gigs. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm ser I'm serious. I will. All right. Thank you so much. I just I don't want to take up much of your time. I want to hear some more. So I'm going to get off the phone and stop talking. I have. You know. I'll okay. Talk, I'll talk to you later, Matt. In right, person. I love you guys. Thank you, Matt. Thank We're you gonna best to Janine and Vicky and Tommy and everybody. All right. Thanks for supporting the Matt and Amy band. We love you. You got it. Anytime. Bye. All right. Good one. Maverick Soul, we'll be right back. We're gonna go to commercial. Be tight. We'll be right back. One resident describes her horrifying experience when she first realized the complex was on fire. I got bronchitis. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. on the fritz you get frustrated when you get frustrated your daughter imitates when your daughter imitates she gets thrown out of school when she gets thrown out of school she meets undesirables when she meets undesirables she ties the knot with undesirables and when she ties the knot with undesirables you get a grandson with a dog collar don't have a grandson with a dog collar get rid of cable and upgrade to direct tv call 1-800 direct tv We are back with the Maverick Soul and my special guest, Mr. Neville Chesters. We're here talking about being backstage with one of the biggest bands ever in the world, The Who. And um, actually, we just had a, uh, um, a friend of the show send in a video, I guess, that was taken from the Coliseum. I don't, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try to run that for you now and give you a little 
idea of, and, and a feel of what this place was, the, the vibe in this place. I don't even if know it's if, poss I if it's possible. Yeah, I'm, let's, I'm, let's see. Can we run that? The, the, the film possible and the vibe possible. I'm not sure. <laughs> no, you, could, you could never... Uh, it was a great vibe. Yeah. That, I'll tell you, it was a good vibe. Yeah, it was. It was, it was good sound, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, considering the Colosseum is not exactly built yeah. for acoustics. No, it it's not. Damn good. <laughs> Live at the Nassau Coliseum Thursday night. The Who. Um, I'd like to thank uh, whoever sent that in. Yeah, the, it was very nice. Yeah. I know. I know you're not supposed to be taking videos or what, but I got to tell you, I don't think there was a person in that whole Coliseum that didn't have their phones doing this. So. Yeah, no, it's amazing, I, I guess that's the new thing now. It's amazing. You know? Well, and then people don't hold their lighters. No up more anymore. lighters. No, no zip phones phone. anymore. Yeah, cell phones. With but the you know, they never even made an announcement about no filming. They didn't. I, no, I bet there are notices at the door at the main entrance. We, didn't, oh. we never went anywhere near the front door. That's well, we didn't take it, so yeah. that's all that matters. So uh, can we, can we run, run the rest of the pitches that we got? I think there's only a couple left. That's possible. Um, just is Mr. Roger. I'll tell you what, for a man his age. Yeah. He, I got to tell you something, boy. Good, doesn't he? he he's he's in way, some he, shape. He's not 70 this year. He's a year older than me. Can we go next one? There we go. So he's only a year older than me. So he's not. He said he was seventy. Oh, Jean. Uh, 
when you next. Oh, we should just just keep an eye on it while we. I mean, you you you're saying about. All right. So there was a few more pitches we had. Um, so getting back to you, mm. it's impossible to 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 to, to give anybody the feeling of it. You had to yeah. be there, you know. Yeah. And it is like that. No, but I mean, I don't think anybody um, could have the feeling like you had. You had to have a separate. Well, feeling. mine's all kind of mixed. First of all, I I I. I it must have very... been good to see them though. Yeah. And talk is. to them, it and is. you yeah. know. Oh, that sound a bit great. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, even I'm blown away by the yeah. amount of equipment. I just, you know, I just, that, that was like, mind-boggling. I, I mean, there isn't that much on stage if you look. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it, it, but I, 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 that that hallway was just completely. It must have been how many thirty boxes at least, at least. Oh, d d d at least fifty. Fifty yeah. minimum. Incredible, incredible. And, and, I, I, and, I would imagine they have. There's 200 fly cases there. Sure. Easy. And that's probable. Like I said, they have at least two sets. Yeah. So they're already set, you know, on, th on Thursday, they're already set for when the, the next gig was um, New Hampshire, I think. Mm hmm The, you know, I mean, some nights they've, they, they play, you know, every night. Right. And then they have right. a break of a couple of nights. And then, you know. Yeah. It, uh, I, I, I did find it amazing the shape that both of them were in yeah i mean pete yeah. i mean he was like a kid yeah. i mean I, I mean energy they're wise, older than me yeah, yeah and yeah. i know how tough that is <laughs> i mean they don't do it for five hours like us idiots do but uh a couple of but hours. i'll tell you what they they i gotta tell you boy that both of them were in fantastic yeah. shape and uh, they looked great um, and they sounded great they sounded phenomenal yeah and um it was it was uh, something I'll never forget, and I could never thank you enough for including us in that. It was yeah, I, I, it was a I can't dream. think of anybody else that would be better suited. You well, know, it, it suited me. Yeah. I'll tell you. Yeah. I tell you. I know it suited Janine. You know. Yeah. Mealy still uh, can't. He's still pissed off about it. But well, you know, we do have to explain while you're here that this was a last minute thing. It happened that day. Well, you just uh, yeah, uh, and then you th and. The shows you decided nine tenths of the way through you went huh Monday. No, I mean yeah. I mean, I the, mean no, the, going the, to the yeah, show. Yeah. I mean it wasn't like he had an abundance of tickets or anything. He had two tickets and that was what you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, you can't I, push I, that too much. No, I, I, I don't. Ah, uh, he's over there. He's oh uh, boy. I, I come don't. on, we just got you a cactus sign poster by everybody in cactus. That's a they got a nice album coming out now too. Okay. Yeah. Is Jim, yeah. Jim is with, over with Randy Pratt. Yep. Yeah. So. I haven't, I'm not, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, even I am quite befuddled by the amount of equipment they have. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, because that's what I'm adding up. I mean, I'm looking at the stage and I'm looking at the screens, I'm looking at the footage. It also seemed you know, like where, it, where was, I, it was almost that, because uh, I mean, Pete, uh, made an announcement on the stage just like you had told me before he was going to do. I told you exactly what he, he was doing. He, he knew everything was going to happen before it happened. Yeah. But uh, he did say that he's going to thank Roger because for the last two years Pete was writing this book. And Roger... Several uh, years. I never realized that they never actually finished Quadrophilia. Quadrophilia. And they never really finished it. Yeah. And this is the actual finished product. And yeah. Pete really humbly thanked uh, Roger. Well, yeah, I mean, all the work that Rod, he did. yeah, Rogers. It's, it's it's taken several years. I don't know yeah. how many. Um, I think he said two. Well, no, you know, two to, to, to finish it it's off. It's taken Pete over ten years to write this. No, I know that. I know. But yeah. I mean, I guess the last two years he put all the finishing touches on it or whatever. But mm. he said he worked very hard on it. Yeah, and, I mean, and, the the footage alone, if you run, I mean, there's probably they probably have two hours of footage. Yeah. And uh, uh, by the way, it's updated. Because the they had a thing, for, they had a, a quick flash of Pussy Riot, free Pussy Riot, that was not on at the Barclays Center. Well, I'll be. No, I did <laughs> not see that. I would have remembered. Because they have all this stuff, you know, like Vietnam and yeah. you know, it's pretty. I'll uh, tell you, it, you know, pretty what was, intense stuff. What was amazing was actually sitting there with Neville mm. and watching 
this 50-foot screen and seeing him as a young man up on the thing. It was quite amazing. So, and then looking in the mirror when I got home and crying. <laughs> Dorian Gray. Dorian Gray. Never ages. Look at him. He's like a kid. He's like a kid. Yeah, in his mind. All right. Listen, I hate to say it, but we are coming to an end. It's been a delight. Uh, I, like I said, I, uh, we, we can't thank you enough for uh, well, everything you've done. Um, it's a tiny little thing that I did. It wasn't for, a tiny for all thing. you've it done wasn't. for me. For all you people out there like me, you can't. You know, it wasn't a tiny thing. It was a big thing to go back there and sit in a dressing room with these guys and have dinner with them and yeah. and and go through the day and watch how it all happened. Sit for, in, in, at a private sound check for the Who, just the three of us sitting right there. It was yeah, not everybody I, gets I, to yeah, see it, right? Nobody gets to see that. Nobody. And, so. Uh, uh, I'm getting waved at and getting, they're going to start throwing things at me. So uh, it's time that we got to hit that old that dusty trail down. with the Maverick Soul. Neville, I can't ever thank you enough, and I'm blessed to have did. you as a friend. It's done. It's done. And uh, I, for all you've done for us and, and everybody here at Madhouse, we will have you back as many times as you want. And I'm definitely going to have you get on the, t on the radio show with me because mm -hmm. I could not think of a better person or a knowledgeable person to be on there with and yeah. play some real classic rock of what the people really want to hear because I think that I think that uh, we need a really really good one, good station. So, so we're Ready? getting that cue again, you know. It yeah. goes fast, doesn't it? As the car goes. And go out and pick yourself up this book from Pete. It's really um, actually a great book. Yeah, it is. It really is a great mm -hmm. book, and you can read about Neville in the book and. Um, Again, I can only just say that for a, for just a guy taking a ride with a legend, it was quite a, quite a day. So we thank you very much, and Madhouse, thanks. You're you. going to make and, something uh, bad out of me. And we got to go. So <laughs> have a blessed week, everybody. Stay safe. Thanks for Peace watching. to you all. And we'll have my boy back very shortly. And again, Vince Montel, thank you, you so much. We'll see you all on the road next week at the Maverick Soul Hour with Tommy Mark right here on Madhouse TV. So God bless and have a great week. With the one you love.